So, since I made my list of the most underrated creepypastas in my eyes, it seems only natural to do one about the most overrated creepypastas in my eyes. These stories, for whatever reason, gains so much notoriety and attention for all the wrong reasons. Whether it's awful writing, poor grammar or contrived storytelling, these stories really get on my nerves, as they receive so much love when other, much better stories don't. Now keep in mind, overrated doesn't always mean bad, and this is simply my opinion. If you like these stories, that's absolutely fine. I just don't. So please, be mature in the comments section. I know this is YouTube, but we can all be adults here and have calm discussions about creepypastas. Getting mad at me for simply having a different opinion than you regarding internet stories is simply childish and rude. Also, I'm going to assume you've all read these stories in advance, because they're all fairly big creepypastas, and if you haven't, I think I might have saved you. So with all of that said and out of the way, it's time to present the top 10 creepypastas that make me lose fate in the whole community. Alonzi. Number 10. Squidward Suicide? I bet a lot of you are gasping now. Squidward Suicide? The one Hudo has repeatedly stated he loves on numerous occasions? Just letting you guys know, numbers 10, 9, and 8 on this list are stories that I actually like. Although I can definitely see why people find them overrated, and therefore, they're on the list. But yes, I can agree, Squidward Suicide is overrated. The story, as much as I love it, for introducing me to the creepypasta universe, is forced. The dead children are just there to add shock factor to the story, which is kind of unfortunate. So yes, I can definitely see why people love the story, and I can see why people don't. So yeah, it's on the list. Number 9. Slenderman. Like I said, I like Slenderman. I do. I consider him rather scary and interesting. And Marble Hornets is fantastic. But seriously guys, there are better pastas out there. I'm getting really sick and tired of seeing him everywhere. Games, movies, radical fans, ugh. He's got it all. There's not much else to say. Let's move on. Number 8. Ben Drowned Well, 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 Ben Drowned. This story is loved by tons and tons of people, me included. You all know the story. Haunted game cartridge, spooky stuff starts happening, creepy statue, reverse music, and clever bot. But to be honest, when I first read the story, I found it to be rather confusing, probably because I hadn't played Majora's Mask before, and not as scary as many would lead me to believe. The story has, in my opinion, become very overhyped in recent years. That doesn't mean the story is bad though. It's very well written and creepy. Just not as creepy as I personally thought it was gonna be. And putting it at number one on like every single goddamn creepypasta list is getting really old guys. Believe me, I know. Number 7. Laughing Jack Well, now we're getting into the territory where fangirls all over the world are getting their pitchforks and torches ready. Laughing Jack is not a good story. Yes, I said it. It's poorly written, forced, and illogical. For starters, the family dog is brought in simply to get killed. The story is filled with gore for no other reason than to have gore. The police tell the mother and James to go back inside, even though the burglar who had destroyed their house could very well return later. And Jack's character is not explained at all. There are no motivations for him. And I know it's explained in his origin story, but I haven't read that one and I don't plan to. A friend of mine summarized it for me, and I don't feel like reading it. Why did Jack's original owner suddenly decide to start killing people? He needs a goddamn motivation for it. He acted normal before, so why is he a serial killer all of a sudden? And why did he never open Jack's box for years? Why did Jack not get out of it earlier? Why did he kill his owner in the end? Why does he decide to go look for more people to kill? Just because it's a game? No, that's not enough. 
<sighs> there are snippets of something good in here somewhere, but it's overshadowed by the major flaws in the story, which ultimately drags it down for me. So yeah, I don't like it. It wasn't terrible, but it certainly wasn't good either. Number 6. Eyeless Jack. Another Jack? Eh, whatever. This story feels incredibly brief and left no impact on me whatsoever. While Laughing Jack gave us a decent main character, the mother, Eyeless Jack gives us Mitch, a completely blank Mary Sue who is not interesting in the slightest. The monster in the story doesn't even make much sense. Why does he eat kidneys? How was he able to remove Mitch's kidneys without him noticing? And why did he cut Mitch on his face at first if he simply wanted his kidneys? And why did Mitch think the most logical thing to do when confronting the thing was to take a picture of it? Not scream for help? Call the police? Forced, contrived, and left no impact on me whatsoever. Number 5. Sally slash play with me. This story offends me. Things are getting real tonight. It takes a very serious subject and uses it as nothing more than a plot device. If you didn't know, the main character in the story, Sally, is raped by her uncle at the age of six. First of all, there is no motivation for why he decides to do this. I guess you don't have to understand a character's motivations if you just pass them off as nuts. And besides, it could have easily been taken out of the story, as her uncle still just kills her the next day or so later. It feels so forced, so contrived, and that really offends me. Including such a serious and terrible subject as rape in a story simply for shock factor is simply disgusting. And the worst part? When Sally tells her mother that her uncle touched her, her mother simply brushes it off as a bad dream. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what made me loathe this story. And after Sally is killed by her uncle, for no reason whatsoever, she's suddenly a paranormal killer who kills people. Why? Why does she start killing people? Why does she become paranormal? EXPLAIN STORY! EXPLAIN! Number 4. Tailstall. Ah yes, the infamous Tailstall. I don't get it. Why are people so afraid of this little doll? It's like a foot tall. And the story behind it is just... RIDICULOUS! How the hell would a little doll be able to murder people? It would get squashed like a bug! It's so dumb! Why does it kill people? And how is it able to face out of your television screen? Why would programmers even put such a feature in a game? So yeah, Tailstall sucks. Number 3. Sonic.exe So first we had Laughing and Eyeless Jack, now we have Tailstall and Sonic.exe? This story is just awful, plain and simple. Poorly written, forced, contrived, unoriginal, cliched, illogical, it's got it all. While Tailstall deals with something that could possibly happen to anyone, Sonic.exe deals with what the main character, Tom, goes through. And holy hell, is Tom a narcissist. I'll get to that in a minute though. But yes, the story gives us no motivation or reason for why Sonic suddenly decides to start killing his friends. Slow day in the office, I guess. There's no explanation for how the game is able to break the fourth wall. Tom in the story is a huge, excuse my language here, pussy, and doesn't even listen to his friends' possibly final wish. How was he able to remember and describe the title screen in such great detail if he only saw it for a split second? And if he remembered how it looked like, why did he just pass it off as a glitch? Yeah, totally a glitch. And once again, how the hell would Sonic be able to face through the damn computer screen? And... A bloody Sonic plushie? Really? That's what everything built up to? Such a huge letdown, and completely ruined any plausibility and dignity 
that this story had left, if it had any. So about Tommy Boy here being a narcissist, well, let me explain. I would like to thank Shimeji Terezi for bringing this wonderful blog post to my attention. This blog post was the author of the original story's response to the story being moved to the Trollpasta wiki. I'm not making this shit up. I'm gonna read it word for word. Get your barf bags ready. I deeply regret to inform you all that I received some bad news. The admins of the Creepypasta wiki have finally decided to delete Sonic.exe off of the wiki on the grounds that it was badly written and had too many cliches and was a bad example of what should be a creepypasta. Bull friggin horseshit. As you can see, I am furious with the fact that my masterpiece You call your own work a fucking masterpiece? Which has won the hearts of millions and has made a massive impact on the internet is being brought down by a bunch of jealous, arrogant, retarded fury haters. But that does not mean I'm just gonna sit down and take this lightly. Nope, 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 nope. They've been messing with the bull and now they've called out the horns. Listen everyone, I need your help with this. We are at war here. I want every Sonic.exe fan who is reading this to get the word out. I want you to tell every other Sonic.exe fan out there, every fanatic, every artist, every follower of my creation about this. Tell your friends who are also Sonic.exe fans if they have to. Tell them that they have to keep the spirit of Sonic.exe alive. Make more fan art, make more videos, block the haters, praise Sonic.exe like you've never have before, build websites dedicated to his greatness, whatever you gotta do to keep him alive and strong, just do it. The deletion of Sonic.exe from the wiki is but a minor cut on our flower of greatness my friends, and that cut has done nothing but further the spreading, and we are the pollen of this flower. We need to prepare for our victory over the haters. The haters need to bleed for their crimes. Rejoice my fellow Sonic.exe fans, our glorious little hellspawn shall have the laugh yet. This will be his ultimate victory, the absolute subjugation of the internet itself. He then proceeded to delete every comment that gave him criticism. What a wonderful guy, huh? Number 2. Clockwork, your time is up. Okay. Okay, now we're getting into the stories that enraged me. And the funny thing is, I read this story less than two hours ago at the time I'm writing this script. But after reading the first page, the very first page, the very introduction, the very start of this tale, I knew it would make it on this list. Jesus fucking Christ. Where do I start? Where do I start? Okay. Okay. First of all, none of the characters in this story has any motivation for anything whatsoever. I know I keep saying that, but it rings true with all of this. Why was her father so angry? Explain story, explain! Her brother is brought up out of nowhere in the beginning of the story, and in the exact same scene that he is introduced, the exact same scene, he rapes his little sister. No reason, no explanation, no motivation, nothing. And this is what absolutely enraged me. Just like Sally, rape is used as nothing more than a goddamn plot device. Nothing else. That is inexcusable. You take this real, traumatizing subject that many people unfortunately go through in their lives and you exploit it simply to have it there for shock. Absolutely repulsive. Okay. Okay, gotta keep it together. Okay, okay. So, so after that, why is Natalie, the main character, so fixated with blood and gore? What's her reason for liking it? 
Why does her boyfriend suddenly break up with her all of a sudden? Why did he not have an issue with her before? It's so forced, so contrived, so much bullshit! <laughs> and so Natalie, the wannabe edgy emo protagonist of the day, goes home and stitches her mouth for no fucking reason. She goes insane because of a fucking breakup. God, this story is fucking terrible! I don't want to keep going. I have to? Really? Fine. So her parents take her to a therapist to smack some sense into her wannabe emo. Jeff dumb emo face. And the therapist is the worst therapist I've ever heard. She gives up after a fucking 30 second conversation and just instantly decides to put Natalie on quote unquote mental drugs. Why? Why do they start giving her drugs without trying to help her first? What the fuck were these people smoking? Did they really think tying her up and giving her drugs would help her? And so she breaks free and for no reason whatsoever other than the plot needs it and says she has to, she starts overly violently killing innocent people. Innocent people? Why do people like this character? And what is her motivation? Don't give me the oh bad childhood excuse, it's really stupid. And also, she's 16 years old. How is she able to overpower everyone without taking any damage whatsoever? And so, she kills her family in really gory ways for no other reason than ooh gore ooh spooky. She goes home, goes into the bathroom and does the stupidest fucking thing ever. Apparently, for whatever fucking reason, she's worrying about time. And so, she gouges her eye out for no reason and replaces it with a clock. That is so forced that I cannot describe in words how terrible it is. And so, she self-proclaims herself as clockwork the serial killer. Fuck this story up the ass with a pogo stick. On top of every fucking thing, the story is poorly written, has several grammatical issues, and so much more. The character of Natalie is simply a whiny little bitch who bathes in her own sorrow. The story is also painfully obviously inspired by Jeff the Killer, which is a terrible story to begin with. Which perfectly segues into... Number 1. Jeff the Killer. Go ahead, Jeff fangirls. Come at me. Burn my house down. Jeff the Killer is the worst thing ever made by a human. Except for bagpipes. This story... This story... It pisses me off even just thinking about it. It is one of the most popular creepypastas out there of all time and it really makes me lose faith in everything. And people actually believe in this whiny little emo? Ugh, it's time to rip Jeff the Killer a new one. So, Jeff was a normal kid before this story. All of a sudden, he starts getting psycho super mega powers to beat everyone. Newsflash, fuckers. Adrenaline doesn't turn you into a super strong taekwondo monster. And don't give me the excuse that he's a psychopath. You're either born a psychopath or become one after traumatic events. And Jeff was a normal kid before shit went down. No kids talk like the bullies in the story. 
Their lines are cringe-inducing, cliché bullshit. They're completely flat characters who are simply there to cause misery in Jeff's life, and nothing else. The real world doesn't work like that. The character of Jeff is a horribly unlikable asshole. Why do people sympathize and glorify this disgusting serial killer? So what? His brother was sent to jail and he got into a whooping two fights with some over-the-top cartoon gun-wielding gangster bullies who lives in a rich neighborhood. Is that your excuse for going insane? That's fucking pathetic! People are bullied daily, and do they go insane? No! Now don't get me wrong, bullying is a serious issue, but I'm just saying. Every single character is completely flat, uninteresting, and blank. The dialogue and writing is poor and unbelievably cheesy. Cutting your mouth like that would result in it getting infected, and burning your eyelids would cause dust and particles to get in your eyeballs, making you blind almost instantly. And how in the fuck did Jeff manage to burn out his eyelids without burning his eyes? And why did his skin turn white? Fire does not work that way. And Jeff's parents are the worst parents of all time. Sure, don't go get help for your mentally unstable son. Just get the fucking shotgun and kill him, eh? I'm gonna leave two links in the description. One, to my other video, where I debunk Jeff and I bring up a lot of points that I don't in this video. And the other, to a podcast that totally rips the story of Jeff the Killer to shreds. You all need to listen to this Fuck. Fuck, this story is god fucking awful and I hate everything about it. And the fact that it is so recognized and so loved by millions really boggles my fucking mind. Why do people like this disgusting excuse of a serial killer? Why do we glorify murder? Why do we see a person who murders innocent people as a badass? As someone we want to be? As someone to worship? But that's not even the worst part. You wanna know the sad part? The really sad part? The original, unedited picture of Jeff was of a young, obese girl who killed herself after being bullied on 4chan and someone got the brilliant idea to photoshop her picture and turn her into something terrifying so yes this girl who is now dead lives on in the form of something terrifying and that is why I will never, ever defend Jeff the Killer. So there you have it. My picks for the most overrated creepypastas out there. I think I went insane when making this video and you probably heard that I got really enraged and angry but that's because I really do get passionate when such awful stories get such notoriety when they are just so god awful. Remember though, it's just my opinion. And if you like the stories, that's fine. It just means you're stoop. Thanks for watching everyone. Hope you all have amazing days and I'll see you later. Stay awesome everyone. I love you all.
Goodbye.